It's been on all day, so you know that's going to happen, right? Yeah. Uh, it's going to be fun. And I gave you some handouts because uh, originally we weren't going to talk anything about this, but people were asking us about, well, if you're going to do video podcasting, where are you going to put it? How are you going to put it up there? So uh, some of the things to learn about um, technology in general and how to uh, just, just get a feel for anything you wanted, things that we're not going to talk about today. Uh, some of the websites are on that list that you might have. Uh, eLearningGuild.com is an organization of, um, of e-learning professionals who design uh, online courses for universities, um, for high schools, for school districts. And if you go online, you can get the published papers on uh, things like creating wikis, using them in classrooms, um, using uh, different techniques. <laughs> the Innovator Educator uh, blog is written by a lady in the New York City School District who's in charge of the entire uh, district on education and using technology in the city of uh, New York. And what she does is she puts up all types of articles about how teachers in New York City are using different technology, whether it's just storyboards or whether it's PowerPoints or whether it's um, uh, podcasting or blogging or using wikis. So you can, um, you can go to our articles and you could read about how they're doing that in New York City, how different teachers are using techniques. You can look at different PowerPoints. You can look up different presentations um, in both of these websites by whatever content you're looking for or whatever technology you might be looking for. Um, Facebook groups, uh, if you are on a uh, social networking website and you uh, find a group or look for a group on educational technology, um, using Flash or designing with Flash or uh, using smart boards, you'll be connected with a group of people that are, um, are using these same technologies and also looking to share ideas with other people. A lot of the people in the Facebook groups are starting them are Apple educators uh, from Apple Computer. They get a lot of money to go out and uh, give presentations to other teachers how to use technology in the classroom, even if we don't have Apple products. Um, which most schools don't because they don't like it because they get more money for uh, getting bulk PCs than a couple Apple computers. And also I have a couple books up here. I gave you guys a list of resources. Um, Teaching with Technology is for general information on how to use technology in the classroom. Whether you're just using, um, you're just looking for websites, you're going to do uh, uh, PowerPoint presentations or um, you're going to create a classroom wiki. Um, all levels from uh, beginning to advanced, uh, how to use even Flash products, how to do video podcasting. It's a, it's a nice book that uh, I had in one of my graduate classes that encompasses anyone, whether you're beginning or advanced, and talks uh, into all the, all the different sections a little bit. If you are someone that's very familiar with the computer and set up, uh, anyone have a classroom wiki or... What is a wiki? Oh, what's a wiki? We'll get to that then. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to wiki next. Um, if, if you're not familiar with a classroom wiki, it's kind of like setting up a textbook online or classroom journals. All right. Uh, anyone familiar with having students keep a journal in their class of, of how they feel um, on a daily basis? Yeah. Um, well, that's kind of what a wiki is all about. It's about having the kids um, go home and put all this information on a computer. Now, the good thing about wikis, or the bad things about wikis, is students can, um, can communicate with each other, but you could uh, have a closed community, and we'll talk about that a little bit, where only your students can log on and read uh, what's on there. And I'll show you a couple examples of, of what a wiki is. Uh, most people are familiar with Wikipedia. Yeah. That was the first and largest, and uh, this is what created everyone else's <coughs> wiki. Uh, Wikipedia is a website. Um, it's like... All the information that ever existed and anyone can add it or take away. So um, what you have there is you have, uh, I, I want to do uh, some type of page about Orlando and just how wonderful he is and where he's from. And, uh, and no one's ever done that before, obviously, for reasons. Um, so I go online and I put on his bio, because a lot of people do this for other people's bios, They'll, you know, do it for... Uh, someone famous like Bill Gates or something like that, put a bio up, who he is, just like a regular encyclopedia, right? But even not so famous people, like Orlando, uh, could be added to this in case anyone's looking for information on him. And, um, and then that's added to that encyclopedia. 
Uh, a lot of uh, educators, when it first began, had a hang-up saying, well, if anyone could add information, then the information must be a bunch of a hooey, right? How could all these people be experts on everything? Well, the thing with the wiki is the people that add all this information aren't experts on everything, but the people who edit and manage the site and allow what's being published usually are, and they've worked their way in there some way. So if I was to write something about cosmology, I know for a fact that the people that would review it and accept it are some of the country or the world's top cosmologists. Uh, you would think they have nothing better to do than be on a computer on Wikipedia all day, but some of them like that spare time instead of uh, spending time with uh, whoever they want to spend time with, would rather be at home looking at a telescope or on Wikipedia. And they are. So the information is pretty, uh, pretty accurate and, uh, and you know, it's on average of any other encyclopedia. So we'll get into uh, more. These are kind of, if you're, if, you're, if you're a beginner, you're looking for ways to use technology in the classroom. Um, if you're more advanced and are looking for how to, how to do uh, web quests or how to use social networking like Facebook with a class, this book was put on the list too. This is an excellent book of e-learning activities. Each one is like a, a classroom lesson with two or three pages that explains what you're going to tell the students to do, how you can do it, and what outcomes you would want, whether it's a project about Shakespeare or whether it's a science project or looking up uh, information on black holes. Uh, the 75 activities encompass just about anything you can think about, creating a wiki and using it in a classroom as a discussion base, um, using web quests, looking on the internet, uh, using MySpace or Facebook or other social networking uh, uh, websites to uh, get kids to discuss things out of the classroom. And um, some, of the other, some of the other ways to do e-learning environment, HTML, uh, you can get a simple book on, on coding. Um, I think somebody grabbed it, Idiot's Guide to HTML or Web Page Design. Uh, might be out there somewhere. Um, oh, here it is. So you could learn how to create your own web page. And uh, some of the reasons to do something like that, by learning basics HTML4, you could set up your, your entire uh, website. And um, you can uh, set, set things up. Now, we can do this with wikis, too. Um, I haven't had a, a smart board in my classroom all year, so if I look silly because I keep going to the computer, it's just because it's the uh, nature of habit. Um, so we can we can set these up. There could be videos. Um, learning this, you can embed your videos into a web page. Um, so you can have uh, educational videos added to it. You could put up your um, your Word docs. Uh, PDFs. You can set up a daily calendar. Um, this this is all. If you if you understand HTML, it's it's pretty basic stuff to just keep adding all this stuff up and changing the dates on it. But if you don't, uh, this is what this is more about. Is if you don't understand all this stuff, the Catholic Church declared much of Galileo's work. Then um, you could set up um, things like at my uh, uh, MySpace. Um, and you could have the students, uh, you could post things where they could go to uh, different areas to collaborate or discuss uh, classroom uh, problems. You can go to videos, uh, you could go to internet modules, you could even do uh, interactive reviews where students are able to um, watch videos of, for physics, regions content. We have a question about, uh, are the books on, on any of the... Um, the ones I discussed are on the resources sheets. We have the um, 75 e-learning activities. Oh, and it is the other one isn't on there. The, um, the hardcover one's on there. The 75 e-learning And here's the hardcover. If you want to, if you want me to pass around any of these books, uh, you just pass them around, take a look at them. You want to write down these books are on. Websites, electronically. What list are you talking about? 
the resources list right here. You got it in your hand. This is the book right here. 75 to learn activities to make online learn by Ryan Wagner. The other one's uh, being passed around right now. All right, so, and then you could have them, uh, they could watch a video and then they could take a quiz on it, um, type in their name, and they could take a quiz on some of the content they just learned and get a grade for that. So these are the, some of the things with the e-learning environment. So we threw that in there so that you guys could get a look at, um, if you get any book about uh, web page design or HTML, design you can you can put these together it'll show you how to embed videos with simple codes it'll show you how to create links uh, and how to lay out pictures and the rest of it that's that's all I used to create this was that idiot book over there HTML for idiots uh, it's simple code you go through a book there's not there's not too much there's also there should be uh, in each school there should be a teacher that usually does some web page design or uses some software that they can help you through the process. All right, so I don't want to... Any questions before I go on to podcasting? Meat and potatoes? Say it again. Any questions? No? Do you require students to do this, or is this something extra? To do what? To look in and take the quizzes. Oh, yeah. Something extra? Yeah, these are graded. This is their homework. Oh, okay. Or classwork, depending oh. on uh, where we are in the semester. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, they're 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 required uh, because to me I've seen these are these are uh, well not this one I've set these up with Regents questions uh, so when a student takes this and then they get a grade at the end of it these are random questions um, there's 30 questions they take and there's 120 questions in the pool and these are all taken off the old Regents exams when a student takes this if they get a 30 percent on it hello that's what you're gonna get what if they don't have computers at home well they can do it here at school they um, the kids I have in the physics class have computers at home um, in the beginning of the year the first thing I ask them is uh, do they have a MySpace or a Facebook uh, they don't most of them didn't know what Facebook was um, but all of them put down their MySpace <laughs> well if they got time for MySpace right. how are they gonna do that without they can find it Com computers in the schools um, we have computer labs. We have the library has computers. They're going to be there before or after school. Uh, depending on what class you're going to take, I mean, some kids don't have textbooks at home. So, you know, mm -hmm. computer, textbook, I don't have this, I don't have that. What are you going to do? I feel better, I assign homework. Some of the kids have web on their phone. Yeah, exactly. All right. Any other questions on it? I was kind of going from uh, from difficult to. This is a website that has you know how I had the class with a calendar, all set up. When I showed it to you, this is all set up. You don't have to know anything about HTML4. When you go into this, um, you join this to participate. You get your own classroom. You can have your students sign up for it. Only they can go in and and get set up. But when you have it, you already have a calendar, kind of like when you use. Um, uh, Microsoft Outlook, you know how it has your own little calendar where you can put your office meetings and all the rest of it. It has it set up just like that. And you could click on any one of the dates and you can upload documents. So this is a this is something that's that's all set up. All you need to know how to do is to um, when you get in here is to click on the day on the calendar and then hit upload and get that document from your pen drive or from your computer hard drive and upload it right to the internet. So this is, this is something that, that isn't a wiki. It's somewhere in between all that crazy stuff I learned from HTML4, setting up a classroom calendar and collaborating with others and letting the students go up and check their work and see their progress. And um, just basically all the knowledge you need is just kind of to uh, know how to upload documents into a calendar uh, for specific dates. And then the students can go in there and they can see the calendar themselves. You can put links. You could you could do almost anything I did without having any knowledge of uh, web page design. So this site is listed on your uh, on your um, site, and they have online classes um, that are free. This was uh, this is built 
and given uh, through a grant through Northwestern University. Um, you can learn more about the project. Um, the courses are free. The website's free. Um, there's videos, um, tours on how to learn how to use it, news, um, guide to ar archiving, uh, looking at other people's projects. So I just wanted to put that out there. If, if you're looking to do things like um, video podcasting, you might also want to look into how to set up an e-learning environment so that you can put your videos or put your Word documents in an order that students can easily um, go through and, uh, and find. All right? Any questions about that stuff yet? I have a question. <clears throat> is this one that you're showing us right now, is it just for science for you? No, no, no. This it's is for, for any kind any of subject. And you can look in other teachers' classrooms, too. You can actually, the great thing about this is you can, you can go in and you could actually participate with another with another teacher, who they could be anywhere, but um, if you they have their class all set up, you can kind of just participate with them without having to go through all the trouble yourself. You can do links to what they have on their sites. So, um, say there were two English teachers in here that decided they wanted to do something in the district, they could both go in and kind of set up their classes and put word documents, and then they could put the names my class, your class, oh, right. and have like one space where all the students can kind of go and share ideas mm -hmm. and stuff. So, um, um, just like I'm saying, they get they have different projects too you could set up. Um, say with um, the Adler Planetarium had a Quasar research project mm -hmm. uh, where they used this uh, big satellite called the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, and the students had access to all the data coming from the um, satellite and could work with the scientists. They had a scientist mentor. They had six scientist mentors that worked with the students. So they worked with five or six students. And the students kept science journals. These, these are all free things that are in there too because they get National Science Foundation grants to work with, um, with kids and do outreach for the schools. Um, the fact that Northwestern is in Chicago and they have the Field Museum and they have the Planetarium and the Art Museum and some of the other stuff allows them to, to go in and peddle some of the, um, some of the uh, special interests to get to get scientists involved with high school students but this is all built for high school uh, middle school and elementary school students and there's there's I mean it's it's for everyone it's a huge spectrum and I just wanted to to let you know that it's here and it's easy to use and you can kind of go in and check videos and see how to set it up it's and it's free it's all free Uh, Wiki, Wikipedia. What is a what is a wiki? Um, a wiki is uh, when you set up, and these are free. You set up similar to something similar to this uh, <coughs> website. Um, they're free. They're for K for twelve. When you set it up, uh, you put in a username, you put in a password, you say you want to manage it. Uh, you have the kids email you so that they can um, they can log on. You can keep it closed or you can keep it open. So this is a wiki. This is all set up. You set up different areas. It allows you to put in documents for the kids to download, uh, whether they're PDFs, Word documents, PowerPoints. Um, some of the things I discussed is uh, this is a professional uh, physics wiki for teachers, not for students. Uh, if you want to know what a wiki is, you can go to Wikipedia, you can Google uh, whatever subject area, whatever class it is, and see where these resources is. I use this a lot because this has lessons I can use on a daily basis. I pick in what I want to talk about if I want projects or if I want to talk about um, gravity, uh, Newton's laws, and I can take these documents and I can print those out and I can do them in my class. And I can add them, I can take away. They're all done by other teachers. Uh, there's simulations you can do. Um, all types of websites that have different uh, simulations where you can pull things around and, uh, and let them go, uh, you know, so kids can check it out. Um, but I could use them in the classroom. And it's all organized the way I cover it in my curriculum like a textbook, so it's easy for me to follow. So a lot of people with wikis use it on a professional basis with other teachers. They find one where a group of teachers get together and they add and take away, and they get their lessons that way.